Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Happy Monday. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. We got Law back there spinning the dials what and up? doing all that fun stuff. Do you spin dials back there? Yes. It looks more, bu- uh, it looks more button. Uh, more faders, button buttons. Pusher, but uh, yeah, there's some fading. You are a button pusher. I don't know where the yeah. spinning the dials term came from in radio yeah, where production. Did that come from, Jay? It's never really been wheels. It's always been faders and buttons and... Uh, There's no real more, dial back Probably there. more old, older radio boards probably had more dials I and, than, than faders. As far as I can recall, it's always been faders. Would you spin them, old. though? You wouldn't really spin them. I don't think you would spin them. Well, well, it's probably radio stations, when they played vinyl records, you had to spin it more. I don't know if you'd the, ever yeah, call that a dial. the old uh, wheel of wax, I guess you would yeah. say. But I don't know. I'll have to hit up one of my old uh, engineering too slash bad, Too bad uh, the grabber's producers. not around. I bet you he knew why. You know who would That's know? True. Dave Miska. Good old Dave Miska. I'm sure he's watching. Uh, he would he, he would let me know. I'll let you know what I find out. Tune in tomorrow to find nice. out why. <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks for being here. We appreciate y'all uh, being here as always. And again, shout out Saturday night slash Sunday morning. Yeah, a huge turnout. Lots of people for the Hawks five four overtime win. We were shocked how many people were on YouTube. And quite frankly, it was a little bit uh, inspiring after a late night with overtime after a long week of late games to see that when we log on to the show is like oh man all right let's do this mm-hmm. you know it was really great to see so thank yeah. you for doing that i mean i think it was mainly because braggs was producing i think so you know he's now a star i mean maybe he asks, yeah he d- doesn't hurt he asks matt painter questions that go viral <laughs> you know saw that no, yeah. he's got a knack for that yeah. yeah yeah he's been killing it man he's in the stands well do us a favor and kill that like button for us smash it elbow it leg drop it perfect plex it uh, give it the Yokozuna bonsai drop. You could do what Rhea Ripley did this weekend. And yes. Rub your butt all over it. You could Steve do that. Face. Yeah. Just oh, once before not, I die. Didn't say that. Lots of things to do to that like button. Just make sure you subscribe <laughs> to the YouTube page as that well. That wasn't the Rockford show, was it? No. no. Oh, no. Darn. I would have walked to Rockford for that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also, podcast listeners, make sure you are uh, following and subscribe to all that fun stuff and leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. All right. Let's start with today's practice. Now, we learned after Saturday's game that during the first period, Luke Richardson really gave it to the Hawks. Ryan Donato called it intense and scary. Mm -hmm. Um, So he was asked about it today. I think we should just sort of let Luke speak for himself here. So just so you know, this is not the full Luke Richardson. He's talked for about 17 minutes today. It was a lot of uh, talking for a, a guy who did not have his full voice today. Yes. Uh, So it starts off with him explaining the talk during the intermission, and then later it gets to Charlie Romeliotis, asked my Greek brother, asked him about um, the bag skate that happened to practice today. So it's spliced together. It's all on the first period lecture and the bag skate today. Here he is, Luke Richardson. The bag skate, skate at the end there. Uh, is this just uh, <coughs> kind of getting, getting the message across? Or yeah, it's a little bit of a get, grab their attention. And you know, I mean, I know we... We skipped out uh, of the game, luckily, uh, on top. But uh, you know, and that's that's uh, you know great on them that they they were able to do that. But uh, you know, if we go back two games, we really weren't happy with our performance in two games, and that's just not uh, professional enough uh, for me. So you have to do it every day, and sometimes that's the way the game is played, up and down the ice or over over and back. So uh, it just uh, you know sets home that. It's you know really unacceptable, uh, really for our, the standard that we want to have for our work ethic. So uh, we we worked in practice today. What, did you have to re- reconcile the the good of coming back from a four goal deficit versus hey that start is unacceptable? <clears throat> yeah, no, I thought uh, we in video today before practice we showed um, where we were not great at all, and part of it was uh, mentally, and some of it was physically, and. Um, I think both, you know, that's, that's a disaster. And I said, you know, like not, not a, 
Uh, I thought they, not taking anything away from San Jose, I thought they worked hard and they deserved to have a 4 nothing lead. And um, we were just, we, we got some breaks and we made some good plays in the second half and we showed a few areas where it looked like that tide turned in the second period. We started to play a little faster and a little bit more urgent. And, um, and then guys came to life, but I said, that's not going to happen every night. And it didn't happen the game before. So that's a good lesson to take from those two games. I know the, the players were saying you let them have it a little bit after the first period. As a coach, how do you how do you balance like when you pick those spots to, to share those frustrations? Because if you do it too many times and it loses its meaning, you're very calm and like you don't do that a ton. So like how did how did you know like this is a I didn't wait till after the first time. Okay. I waited for a timeout and I called them in close because I didn't want to waste the timeout uh, that early in the game and I don't I don't like doing that and uh, it just got to the point where and it didn't get much better right away. But, uh, you know, I mean, I think it, you know, it might take time to sit, sit and settle in. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't really want to wait till the end of the first because then, it, it, you know, I mean, it could, you know, trickle and get worse. And, um, you know, you're right. I don't think you can do that too often. I think it just becomes falls in deaf ears after a while. And uh, I think what you need to do is, uh, you know, make them realize that, uh, you know, I mean, this is up to them to be ready. And, and you know I mean? We, we need to be ready and give them a good game plan that they can succeed at, which we think it's, it is. And, and if we're always up for discussion with them about certain parts of our, our systems and, and what we do and questions on gray areas and, and how to fix them and maybe even a little change. It's, it's them playing the game. They're the ones that see it on the ice. It's even different. We're, we're so close on the bench, but they're even on, closer on the ice. It's a different view. So we take that into consideration, but when we feel like we've done our job and prepared them and, and we're doing the exact opposite of what our pregame message was in our video of the other team was, and they're doing the exact same thing that they're doing, uh, that's just, uh, you know, it's unprofessional and it's unacceptable. So you just, you know, I let them know that in the best way, fashion of, of urgency that I, I thought was needed at the time. And... And then I tried to back off and say not too much uh, at all. Even sometimes it's hard. I want to kind of talk through a shift so other people can see what's going on in the ice and get the message. But I, I just try to back off and let the assistants talk and do some stuff for the rest of the period. And then I didn't go in between periods. I, I didn't feel like, why would I double up on the message and then feel, sound contradictory or repetitive? One of the two. So I just stayed out of there and let the, hopefully the veterans take that message and figure it out. And it took a little while. The start wasn't great. It was still shaky. Uh, but I thought in the middle of the period when uh, we Donato scored that goal, it started in our zone and we started to play faster. And I think once we got that goal, our bench really lit up. And uh, we had a really good uh, second goal from Tyler on a four check. And that was just from our urgency of play, of getting out of our zone quick and getting in on the offensive four check and uh, making the other team turn the puck over. And... Uh, you know, I thought it was just, it, they just started to believe. And I went in after the second period and just said that they worked hard. They put themselves in a position. I said, we don't need to win this game in five minutes. We have 20 minutes, 20 plus minutes, really. And that's what we did. And uh, we did, we, I don't think we were very risky. I thought we were very determined. And we had uh, some really good scoring chances and, and created, uh, um, you know, well, I know we scored on a delayed penalty, but, uh, and, and uh, six on five which was great uh, but uh, I thought they earned all those situations so uh, even the the face off we showed the face off in overtime how hard uh, Kershey was digging and Connor came in really hard and worked and they, the two of them won that face off back to Seth and then we were I thought we played it really smart we never gave him the puck back and then Connor drove through the middle uh, on the entry and it took two guys with him because he creates uh, he draws attention and that opened up a huge space gap between Seth coming down the middle and whoever was supposed to cover him, and he made a great shot. So I thought it was textbook in overtime. And um, obviously Peter probably uh, didn't love the team's first half of the game, but I thought in about, I think it was like 13 minutes left in the third period, he made a huge save coming out of the corner with his kind of his glove and his arm. Um, one of the one of the only point blank chances I thought we gave up in the third and he kept it 4-3 that gave us that opportunity so I thought it was a full team effort the second half of the game full team effort 
first half of the game to get into that trouble and a, a full team effort to get out of it. So at least they all did it together. Yeah. Navigating that situation, knowing to kind of bring them out of the commercial break, not going to the first, going at the second. It, did you know that coming in at the start of last year? Is that something you feel like you've maybe learned how to navigate better as the two years have gone on? Well, in the, my two years here, we've been in so many situations at the end of the game where we're one goal differential. Like we've been in a, a lot of uh, six on five situations, which we scored the other night. And we've been in, you know, even a lot of tight games over the course of two years that uh, we're in a five on six situation. You need that timeout. You need it, especially when you're leaning on guys uh, back to back shifts uh, at the end of games. So uh, it, it really is a, a disaster if you have to use it early to wake them up. And then you don't have it when you when you work hard to be in a one goal game at the end. It could cost you. So I I don't know if I necessarily learned that. I just uh, realized that it, it's going to be more common than not to need that. So it, it sounds simple. You're like, oh, it doesn't matter. Why you don't know, take it now? But you you know, utilize those three TV timeouts. It's hard because there's lots of music and lots of going on. But you uh, I think if you're organized uh, and you use it properly. I think it gives you another opportunity to speak to your team uh, without uh, using that timeout. It seems like back in the day that uh, maybe that verbal approach was used more frequently by coaches at this level, even all the way down to minor hockey. Mm -hmm. um, how have you seen the, are players different, or is it, or were they always I've the same? And just with misuse. I think society is different. It's just the way the world is now, and that's just you know I mean it's there's more knowledge and on how to treat and communicate with people so I think you got to realize you got 20 different personalities on the bench sometimes one sentence it's going to mean 20 different things to 20 different people so you have to yeah, I was pretty clear I think and they all got the same message on that one but um, I think you have to make sure that you, you what you say you got to be careful what you say because it could be taken in a different um, meaning or context to 20 different people. So when you're trying to get 20 people to connect, especially five of them on the ice at the same time, uh, you got to be really clear. When you uh, have these <coughs> these kind of letdown periods or letdown games, uh, do you get a sense from either your veterans or your assistants about um, what is causing it? Like, is it mental fatigue? Senioritis, like what? what is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. If that's a good one, but uh, um, I kind of feed off some of the veterans talking on the bench, and you can tell when they're, um, you know, trying to lift the team up, and maybe I step back and let them do it. Um, they kind of hear me say something, and then I can tell they're feeding off of what I said. Uh, same as the assistants are great; they kind of know at that moment. They just kind of step back. Uh, but then after that, they let it settle. They know that I can't really say much more after that. So they got to step forward. So they've all played and, and they understand that. And we talk about it lots of times. So um, I count on both, you know, different you know, services. Um, and you never know when that, that's going to be. Sorry, I got my um today. <laughs> <coughs> it's following me. It's a 21 day cough, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, do you know why the players kind of fall into that trap? No, I don't know why that I just uh, I, I lean on the other guys to help get out of it, uh, you know, or sometimes maybe I have to step up and say something. Uh, but I think in 82 games for 32 teams, it happens to everybody. Uh, the good teams don't let it happen as often uh, at all. Like, you know, you have dri you have driven guys that drive it all the time and they're going to carry people with them. Oh, it's not my night. No, too bad. You're coming. And you know, that's what we want here. We want that culture here. And, you know, we have guys like that and we, you know, we need more, more. There he is, Luke Richardson, Blackhawks head coach, talking about uh, Saturday's piss poor first 30 minutes and uh, today's bag skate. So accountability, it's a good thing. It's a big thing. Yeah, and it's, it's all about setting a tone, setting a precedent for the, uh, you know, expectations of the organization. So... They got the win. It was great, great comeback effort. But like he said, like they had a horrible performance against the Ducks. You come out like that against the Sharks, like you need a kick in the butt sometimes. So it, it worked this time. But it's not something he's always going to go to 
because that's not not his style, and it becomes because yeah, then you're Ger- unaffected. Then you're Gerard Gallant, and you're in a new job every year and yeah. a half, or you're John Tortorella, right? Yep. All right, we're gonna dig into that a little more here on the other side of the break. But first, we want to tell you, and you know this by now, that you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. And with Game Time, you don't have to. They're the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They've got great last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, that's key, and their best price guarantee, Game Time, takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. It's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. They're obsessed with ways with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use that code CHGO for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHGO for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And if you're in the market for a brand new vehicle, the best offers of the year are going on right now during the March Radness Sales Event. Blah, rad. Make your way to Ray Chevrolet on Route 12 in Fox Lake to join in on the savings. One of the top, as one of the top selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest Chevy inventories. They have the perfect tailgate vehicles at Ray Chevy during truck month. Uh, for trucks. a limited time only, they're offering 0% financing for 72 months on new Silverados with over 100 available. They also have 125 vehicles in stock currently priced under $20,000. Seriously, guys, nice. can pricing get more affordable? Oh. I think not. I don't think so. And what's more affordable than free? Not much. Nothing. Nothing. And that's what you're going to get this month at Ray Chevrolet and Fox Lake. A free oil change. All you need to do is mention CHGO when scheduling your oil change. Start your spring off right and schedule it by April 1st. Visit Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com. They've been serving the community since 1963. Find new roads. All right. Uh, I got a question in the chat here from Scott who says, Hi, everybody. How come it's called a bag skate? Is it because they skated hard until someone throws up in a bag? <laughs> there are several theories. That's one of them. That is one of them. Uh, my favorite is you skate so hard that your scrotum falls off. <laughs> bag skate. Yikes. Sure. <laughs> Not literally. I, 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 ho- I hope not literally. Skate your balls off. Yeah. Skate your bag off. Uh, I, I've i always correlated it to uh, the pucks stay in the bag so you don't have a normal practice. You just skate all the time. Sounds good. And uh, I think also there may be a variation where they would put the bags on the ice and you had to skate around the bags in a continuous mm-hmm. circle. So there are many different reasons. If you play like a bag, you have to bag <laughs> skate the next day. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we lots have of <laughs> lots of reasons. Basically, Tom Wilson would never stop. You never <laughs> want a bag skate. They are not fun. The one they no. did today looked ex- ex- especially <laughs> shitty. Well, the the fact that they do it at the end of practice yes. when they've been skating hard for forty five minutes and yeah. then they just up and down and back and forth and up and down and back and forth. Yeah, so it was end to end, and then they would go. So it was end to end, and then you go backwards to the neutral zone and turn around again. And then, and then you'd you did sideboards back and forth twice, mm-hmm. and then you would rotate. So you just go halfway, you know, board to board, then end to end, and you just. Ro- I think everybody went. I think four times. Uh, yeah, I think probably twice, twice through. I think. Yeah, yeah, right. It was uh, did not look pleasant. No, never fun. A lot of red faces and guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of heavy breathing. I mean, these are guys who are professional athletes, and they were. They were hurting they by were the hurting. end of it. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Even I was winded. Yes. I In fairness, t- I did go up the stairs 20 <laughs> minutes earlier, so <laughs> that's normal. Yeah, and when they were when they were setting up, like everyone was like you know spaced out along the boards. I was just like, "What is this drill?" And they all just started skating back and forth. I was like, "Oh, this is going to be fun." I it was Felino, by the way, when it was over. It was like, "All right, boys, let's go, let's go stretch." I kind of had to rally everybody back yeah. together after that because it used a lot of Wind hands down. on knees and heads down. I don't, I don't, didn't see anyone throw up, but not on the ice. Oh, it was, it did not look enjoyable. Yeah, but look, I look I, in kind of what Luke said is that's not something you can go to all the time. And I don't know. I, I, I'm, we're seeing more and more often as the team loses games and. The efforts aren't there. A lot of people saying, like, the team has tuned out the coaching staff and stuff like that. I don't think that's the case at all because 
when you hear Luke Richardson speak, you hear a coach that knows what the hell he's talking about. You're hearing from a coach who knows what it's like to be both a good player and a lunch pail kind of a player. Like Luke Richardson, to me, if you're if you're drawing up like the perfect head coach, and I'm not saying he's a perfect head coach, but when you're like checking boxes, former player with ability, also had to really work hard for everything he had, uh, has been through the grind, played thousands of games. Like, you know what I mean? Like he checks all those boxes. And then when you hear him speak, his justifications are always sound. Yeah. Whether or not you agree or disagree with them is one thing. But the explanation there that he offers, is it always makes sense. Yeah, I, I think there's very little to, I think, be, you know, critiquing in, in, in his style. I, the results obviously are not great, but it's it's the, the roster that he's been handed. And I think he's trying to do the do the best to get the most out of it. Um, and, and look, like these are these are professional hockey players. They are, you know, for the most part, grown adult men. Um, and they they have to show up ready to go. It's their job to, to, to play hockey and, and, and be ready to go uh, when when right from the first uh, first puck drop. And, and from what you know, Luke said in the uh, in, in, in his availability today, it was just like, you know, we we feel like we put together a, a sound game plan. And when the guys go out and do the exact opposite of that game plan to start that game and then they're down to nothing, then he has to jump on them. Um, you know, that's I, I don't know what more a, a coach can do than lay out the game plan. Here's the how and the why. Now you guys got to go out and do it, and then they don't. Like I, it's it's hard to uh, to throw that back at at a problem with Richardson, and I don't think it's a problem that these players are disregarding what he's saying um, purposefully. I think if you are, then we have to have a much different conversation. But it's about making sure that you know these guys are on the same page and understanding that the season is 82 games long, not 70. Like you still have to finish out these last 11, 12, uh, 12, 11 games strong and have those efforts there um, for a sense of pride. And, and this is these are guys that they they've endured a lot of losing this year. Like finishing out the the year with some meaningful efforts, getting some wins. Like I think that's that's going to be good for the guys that are going to be here beyond this season to experience. Yeah, I think we've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of chatter. It's been around a little bit this year, but, you know, the last couple of days since that start, you've seen a lot of, you know, oh, the team's not responding to Richardson. They don't, they don't play hard for him. There is no NHL coach in the entire league that goes in right before the game starts and gives them the rah rah Newt Rockney win one for the Gipper speech. Yeah. That doesn't exist. No, that's that's the movies. So the coach's job is to have a game plan to put his team in, into a, a, a place to succeed. Give them the best chance to win. That's the coach's job. The coach's job is not there to motivate the team to. Be ready to play every night. Well, they're, again, they're professionals. They, they don't. They, they shouldn't, shouldn't have need to be that. motivated. No, it's not a little night. league baseball team where you right. got to keep everybody focused because they want to. You know, your treat do at the end of the game. Thing. Yeah, like <laughs> this is professional hockey. You should if if you are in a room and you have to go in there every game and say, "Come on, guys, we got to play hard. You got to be ready. Let's go!" Rah rah rah. That's a whole nother problem yeah. right there. So the the difference is like you see. Richardson's system is pretty like basic, simple hockey that hasn't changed much since he's been here because, you know, that's the only type of hockey you could really play with the roster that he has right now. But look at the difference between Luke Richardson and and Jeremy Colleton. Yeah. Jeremy Colleton's teams were never prepared to play because they had no idea what the F was going on. And they were the low, Let's make no mistake, too. They were loaded with all-stars. Yes, many of them towards the end of their careers, but you had guys who were they multi-time did. all-stars, Hall of Famer to borderline Hall of Famers, looking at each other like, what is this? Yeah. What is you, this guy? What is this system? They went from winning three Stanley Cups to this guy coming in and saying, well, okay, Duncan Keith, I need you to just chase this guy up and down the ice. I don't care where he is. Right. Duncan mm-hmm. Keith, you're better off in the neutral zone than, than in front of our own net. Like, 
there's a difference between the two. So at some point, you have to get mad at the players for not showing up and not executing. Yeah, right. The coaches can only do so much. When the puck drops, it's on the players right. to execute, to perform, to give a shit. And, and my whole thing, too, is as you look at this particular team and last year's team, the, te- the two that Luke has had, instead of looking at, and look, we get caught up in the game-to-game game thing, too, because it's our job. We do post-game shows. Our jobs are to react after the games. Of course, you're going to get caught up in that sort of thing. But zoom out and look at the guys that matter, right? Bedard, Vlasic, Gorchinski, on and on and on. These young players are going to be presumably part of this thing when they're ready to compete again. All of them have gotten better and better and better. Mm-hmm. Lucas Reichel had a bit of a, set- a setback, and the team, the coaches did everything they could to try to get him out of that. First mm-hmm. line, center, wing, third line, fourth line, second line. Whatever you could possibly do to try to get Lucas Reichel going, they tried and it didn't work. They finally sent him to Rockford. He kind of got the message and has come back and has been a different guy. Mm-hmm. He has gotten the message. And Luke said, like, pointed out today, you'll, we will post it on our uh, on our YouTube, the whole thing, all 17 minutes Luke today. Just that moment where Reichel had that one timer, right, where he goes and finds himself open space and puts a stick up, like, get it to me. Mm. That's the sort of stuff they're looking from, for from him. Take charge. Take command. That's what Reichel wasn't doing. So now, if you want to throw Reichel into that category of ascending, the young players that matter are growing. And someone in the chat pointed out, too, look at Caleb Jones from the start of last year to the end of last year. Yeah. Different guy. Got a lot better. Totally different guy. Look at Philip Kershev from the start of last season to right now. Look mm-hmm. at Seth Jones yeah, I mean, from his first year with Jeremy Cowan into now. Yes, there is, yeah. there is progression. There's development going on, and that's – what you want. Now, when this team gets to the point in 2025, 2026, when they're like, hey, you, the, it's go time. And if you start seeing the underachieving or you start seeing, uh, you know, questionable game plans and, and questionable uh, coaching decisions, then we could start having these discussions on a, on a more serious base. But right now, it's just so early in the process like, yeah, are, are, are there things that go wrong at times? Absolutely. Are there things that, that Luke needs to improve on? Absolutely. Sure. But overall, it's been a fairly positive, you know, first two years of this, win, wins or losses aside. Like, these teams aren't built to win. Last year's roster, this year's roster, not built to win. No. This year's roster was not supposed to be worse than the league. But it wasn't no. supposed to compete. Yeah. It, it, like, it wasn't supposed to be a playoff team. The important things that we need for this team, big picture, are happening. And that's, that's the important part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I think, and Jay, you wrote about it, um, how you evaluate Richardson. You kind of have to evaluate him um, in little, like, pockets right now, like we're talking about, like with the development of the young guys. When the expectation is there for results to be there in the next few seasons that's when you can really say like okay what what is he doing that can that can take the the team to the next level now that he's been given more to work with and and I think until then like it's he was brought in to be the coach that it's going to see out the the rebuilding process and then once that's over bring them up to the next level um, all together. So I, it's, it's, it's not like he's just being a placeholder and it's just like, well, he's just riding out all these losses until the next guy's going to be here. Like their plan is for him to be here. And so they're, they will eventually give him a lot of tools to like go out there and, and, and have a competitive team, have a young team of guys that have developed into hopefully close to their, their ceilings and their potentials. Um, and then, you know, the expectation will be playoffs and, you know, beyond that what would you rather have working with the young players right now a guy like luke richardson who is very uh you know explains everything very well very detailed Mm -hmm. or would you rather have pascal vincent in columbus who was playing adam fantilli less than 10 minutes a night who benched and then demoted kent johnson in october who demoted david yurisek and 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 like 
making questionable line changes, making questionable, like stunting the development of mm. your young. What would you rather have? I, I would rather any question Bridges. about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and and I I think there's. I don't know. I just I I I think there is a lot more good when you get into the details of 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 things um than there is uh you know things to to really hammer on and be like oh, so this guy doesn't know what he's talking about like he knows very much about what he's talking about. Yeah. Yes. The only, the only concern I've had with him this year is why have the starts been bad frequently? That's my only yeah. thing. No, I think that, and and that's that's fair since you know you see it pretty cons- pretty consistently. But I mean, honestly, at this point, is it a full season of the coaching staff doesn't know how to start a game or present a game plan that the team can start the game fast, or is it maybe some of these guys don't have the motor revved up right away? And for whatever reason, it either just doesn't kickstart or it takes 20 minutes of bad hockey before you realize, oh, shoot, we're playing bad hockey. Like, I, I have a hard time laying it at the feet of the, of the coaching staff entirely. Yep. Who's telling us about Circa today? Me. Hey. Hey, Circa Sportsbook. If you like uh, winning money on uh, sports wagering, then do it with Circa Sportsbook because it is the best Sportsbook around. They have tight money line splits and low hold models. So they will strive to keep games, uh, for example, at a minus 110 split on their Circus Sports menu, while other sports books may have the same game at minus 115 or minus 120. Circus Sports keeps as little money as possible on large market bets compared to other books. And they do not limit players based on their winnings. Other books will limit players if they're winning a lot of money. Circa wants you to try and take as much money from them as possible. And they also want you to look at all those different betting sites, look at all those different apps, compare the lines, and see that you are going to get all of the best lines from Circa. And you're going to get the best customer service from Circa as well. They have real people behind the Circa Sports brand who resolve issues in a timely fashion, unlike other books, who will use chatbots. Ooh. Ooh, those suck. All aspects of the app are being run by the same team that runs the main Circa Sports book at Circa Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. So what you want to do is download the Circa Sports Illinois app at circasports.com slash Illinois dash app. Sign up today and be on the lookout for Circa events, watch parties, and tailgates. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER. That is 1-800-426-2537. Or text GAMB, G-A-M-B. Why do you keep, you keep looking at me? You're throwing me off. Focus on the read, man. As, um, <laughs> I, just, I don't feel like I'm doing something wrong. You keep looking at me. I'm like, no, I'm just going to keep staring. Yeah. <laughs> man. Shake your head, too. <laughs> Text GAMB, G-A-M-B, to 833234 or visit areyourreallywinning.com. My, my anxiety. The best of me. guilty conscience. You that, kept looking at me like I like I had. I was like, do I have I was, something I was, on my I face? Was, enjoying, was something I was enjoying <laughs> the the wonderful uh, reading of the disclaimer. I was really into it. it no more good. eye contact I during was, reads. Was, oh. <laughs> New rules. <laughs> hey everybody, beer uh, specifically. I'll stare at you now. Coors Light, and whether it's the Blackhawks <laughs> stressing you out because they can do that on a night to night basis. Or just life in general. Your job sucks. You're stuck or at a Greg staring at you cubicle from 9 to 5. To I yeah. cannot be shaken. Coors Light Need helps chill. you chill all the time. They are the beer that we use to help us find our chill moments all the time. And you know what makes it so chill? Because mm. it's ice freaking cold. The Rockies. That yes. Makes sense. That absolutely. Checks. It's so damn good. When the mountains turn blue, it's <laughs> as cold as the Rockies. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. For a smoother finish when it's time to chill, open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, crisp and refreshing as your Colorado Rockies. When it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer we reach for. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. That's CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. So uh, I saw Godfather CHGO in the chat saying he would prefer a Bruce Cassidy type. I got good news for of you, head though. coach. 
Mm. You just gonna stare at me now? <laughs> no, you were talking. So I was <laughs> see how easy it is. Well, <laughs> you know, it's okay. I thought you were talking to me. Um, I can. Um, What's good news? Greg? Good news is I, I'll take a Bruce Cassidy type. It's kind of what Luke Richardson yeah. is. Bruce Cassidy and yeah. Luke Richardson are like tight, good good friends from the same town. They talk to each other all the time. Their coaching styles are pretty similar. The difference is Bruce Cassidy has had Stanley Cup caliber Interesting. rosters. Mm. Mm. So if you take a Bruce Cassidy type, so will I. I think they got one. Yeah. It's just the results aren't there yeah. because, you know, he doesn't have Jack Eichel and Mark Stone. I just wonder, the, the people that want to fire Luke, who, which, let's be honest, is not a lot of people. What is it specifically that makes you want him to lose his job? Because the team is losing games? By design. Yeah, because they don't have a roster to win many games. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's not a coaching thing. That's a roster thing. Yeah, I, I, I think it's in professional sports, the one of the easiest things to do when a team is not winning games, when you're looking at it from just a win in, wins and loss perspective, the easiest thing to do is say, oh, the coach is the problem. Let's fire him and get a new new coach in here. You can't just fire the players so easily. Uh, let's just fire the coach and try something new. But you, you, you have to look at what the Blackhawks are trying to accomplish. You have to look at the process that they went through in getting Richardson here, and you have to look at the roster uh, and, and what they're trying to accomplish over the next couple of seasons. It's not so cut and dry – uh, and, and, you know, we'll get random emails from uh, sports books that we don't trust that say Luke Richardson is, is plus 600 and the second highest odds to be on the hot seat and the next head coach fired. It's like, okay, you're just not paying attention. Right. That's fine. You're right. just looking that's at the right. You're just looking at the record the and saying, yeah, and say that's yeah. The team oh, the, the, the highest odds is whoever's the coach tell of the Sharks. Yeah. OK, cool. Hockey without telling me you don't actually. Watch. So you have to you have to look at like everything that they're trying to lay out. And Richardson's part of it. And our buddy Windy City Hockey brought it up way earlier in the chat. He says, look at the two, like two of the most successful and respected coaches in the league right now are John Cooper and Jared Bednar from Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, John Cooper from Tampa, obviously, two of the best head coaches in the league. I don't think anyone would argue that. If those two guys became, like, fired coaches, they'd be hired within the day of being fired, both yeah. of them. Yeah. And they both started off with crap-ass, rebuilding, bad rosters. Yeah. And the team stuck with them through the ups and the downs, and they came out the other side. All of a sudden, not hockey idiots. Funny how that works. Yeah, suddenly. And there are so many teams that just fire. We're going to fire, 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 fire. There's no continuity. There's no stability. Mm -hmm. Every year, players are going to have to are learning a brand new system. We talk about it all the time, like in other sports. Think about this, like in the in the NFL. That's why the Bears didn't fire their coaches because they said, "Look, we feel like we got a pretty good team if we can make a couple upgrades, which they have. Mm -hmm. Instead of everyone starting from scratch and learning a new defensive and offensive system, we're going to stay stable for the most part, bring in some new, better players, and all of a sudden the expectations are much better." Yeah. Whether or not you agree with that is fine. That argument can be had. But there is there is an argument for continuity. And, and until you can tell me specifically what Luke Richardson is doing to cost this team games, and I haven't seen any of them. Nate says here, my only criticism of Luke is his devotion to Tenorti. Well, the other <laughs> option is Jacob Magna. Right? Like, yeah. it's not like, it's not like yeah. he's benching Kevin Korchinski over Jared Tenorti. And, yeah, like, we all had issue with Isaac Phillips sitting – and Louis mm -hmm. Carvier sitting, but it wasn't because those guys weren't performing or were outperforming Tenorti. It's just because, well, they're younger. They have more upside. I feel the team has made their decision on those two guys, especially Phillips. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, it is. it was kind of not uh, not awesome seeing those young guys that you'd think were, were fighting for you know positions within the organization in their future, not getting the opportunity to do so and instead of Jared Tenorti, who doesn't have a, a future with the organization beyond this season. Um, but I think it, yeah, I, I think to the point, like there is some, some loyalty to Tenority there, which look like he's a guy that a lot of people enjoy playing with, you know, a good, good teammate. He's going to do a lot of the things that not everyone does play physical and, and, and stand up for teammates and everything. Um, but I think there's, there's a limit to that and we've seen it this season, but yeah, I mean, and look, lineup changes, small things like that, like, sure, like, you can get a little prickly about, 
but you know worrying about first line second line third line fourth line with this roster like it's it's all kind of the same like unless yeah. unless you're playing with Connor Bedard like Connor Bedard mix line, and match everybody, it's everybody it's else. it's really yeah. only going to be marginal differences at most yeah and we didn't play it in the clip but it'll be on the full YouTube like Luke Richardson in Luke Richardson speak pretty much criticized Tornorti this today was asked about him. And like, yeah. he's not a guy that's going to sit out there and really, you know, throw a guy under the bus, but he came close to it a little bit. <laughs> he criticized him a lot. So he sees it. He knows that he's, that Tornorti is, is not uh, a perfect player by any means. Uh, but, but there's just to kind of like wrap up the coaching talk, you know, it's amazing to, to use examples from another sport that, that guys like Bill Belichick and Sean Payton all, all of a sudden become bad coaches when they don't have the Hall of yeah, Fame. Yeah, funny how when Tom Brady retires, Bill Belichick sucks. Yeah, or Sean Payton goes <laughs> to Denver with, with <laughs> Russell Wilson. He doesn't have Drew Brees anymore. That all of a sudden, he can't win games. Crazy. It's weird yeah. how that works. So yeah. when the roster gets better, then we can really start to evaluate where we are with Luke Richardson. Until then, he's here. It's just that all the criticism is just, well, that's how I feel. It's just a gut feel. It's not right. like with Cowan, it was like, look at this. Yeah, the system, system is si- not. Look at this system doesn't yes. work. Yeah. The, the yeah. system itself does not work. And he and he had a uh, uh, just a steadfastness of like, no, it's my way. This works. Like, no, it doesn't. Yeah. Watching at home, you just like. What the fuck are we watching like, yeah it just wasn't you knew it, watching a game like this each is game was not looking. normal looking hockey yeah whether they won or lost it, 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 watching Calton's system made you glitch mm-hmm. like, this is not what hockey looks like yeah it's like playing a video game with the offsides turned off you're like <laughs> wait a minute this yeah. is not why is that guy way up like it just didn't make sense visually mm-hmm. for watching hockey and, and region rev says luke sacrificed developing phillips for his tenority love and we were sort of on that page too uh, the Athletic publishes um, player cards for every team in the league, mm-hmm. and it's a it is a giant tabulation of different metrics, statistics, all those sort of things. Isaac Phillips was the worst rated player on the Blackhawks this year by a significant margin. And look, would I have preferred him in the lineup to Jared Tenorti? Yes, one hundred percent of the time. But I do think that Luke and Kevin Dean are seeing things that we don't see, possibly. And there's yeah. also something to be said for if you're leaving a kid out there to get his ass kicked over and over and over again, that is also stunting development. So and it's that balance of how much can he take? Yeah. And some of the, some of the players this year, um, you know, kind of in the same boat, that development young player boat, like Korchinski and, and, and Vlasic, they have made the strides to play those kinds of minutes, play in those situations and, and keep, you know, keep up with it, be able to kind of handle it. And some guys get, like with, with, with Phillips, he was up and down from Rockford, playing top minutes in Rockford, playing in all different scenarios with Rockford. And he comes up to Chicago, it's third pairing, it's limited minutes. And, you know, if, if you're having bad results in limited minutes, that's going to be something that maybe is a little harder to adjust to at the NHL level um, from an off-the-ice standpoint than an on-the-ice thing. Um, so, I, so you also have to manage that as well with these players. Luke talked about it today um, with how you communicate with players. Like, it's it's a lot different than uh, in years past where one message is is the blanket statement. Like, you have to be able to communicate to different uh, personalities and, and different guys and stages that they're in in their careers or where they're at, you know, right now, season to season, how they're, how they're playing. Um, so I, I think there's... Maybe some things that uh, were different with with Phillips than with other, some of the other young guys. I'd love to see him. I think he's an RFA this year. I'd love to see him get uh, another opportunity to come back, whether it's playing in Rockford with with that group again or um, having an opportunity to to fight for some minutes and in, in, in the NHL. I'd love to see him come back when you know you you don't think Megna and Tenorti are going to be on this team next year. Um, you know, we'll see what happens with Connor Murphy. We'll see what happens with other guys like Ethan Del Mastro and Nolan Allen as they progress, and maybe they'll be back in Rockford next year for another year of, of growth and development mm-hmm. at the AHL level. Um, but yeah, I just I, I I just think there's I still think there's something untapped within Isaac Phillips at the NHL level, whether it's here or elsewhere. Like 
that remains to be seen. Yeah, I mean, we all wanted to see Phillips more, but obviously something just wasn't there. I mean, Luke Richardson and Kevin Dean played nearly 1,800 combined NHL games as, yeah. as a defenseman. I'll trust their judgment when it comes <laughs> to that position. Yeah, oh, I'll yeah. trust what they're looking for, that they have a better eye than any of us. Mm-hmm. Steve from Cicero. Here sure. or in the chat or on Twitter. I will trust their judgment more when it comes to that. And I like Isaac Phillips a lot. He's a great kid. Yeah. Uh, he's got a lot of potential, but... Obviously, it wasn't happening for him. If he was playing better than Jared Tenorti, he would have been in the lineup over Jared Tenorti. I also think I, when I you look at that, when you it's look not at some two, conspiracy, well, you can also and maybe we should ask specifically, right? Like he has also gone down to Rockford and been on a freaking tear. He's got yeah. four goals in his last couple games. Like he's yeah, he's down there kicking ass, and it's maybe they said, important. "Look." We need Rockford to get in the playoffs. We need Rockford right. to make a run here, and Isaac Phillips can help us do that. We were talking about that at practice, Jay and I. We about hey, they're going on the road for three. They probably need to call up another forward if Reese Johnson can't go and, and Colin Blackwell's out. And we were mentioning guys in Rockford. And I was kind of like, I don't know if I want to call those guys up because they're doing so well in Rockford. And quite frankly, the Icehawks' success right now is more important to this organization yeah. than what the oh, Blackhawks yeah. do these final 11 games of the regular season. Yeah. So, you know, I, Cole Gutman, do I take him out of there? He's been one of their he's, best players the last couple of weeks. I don't know if yeah. I take but, but so I don't know who you call up. Like, you know, do you, do you, can't, you know, it, it's, it's a tough decision. Ralston. You know, but if you're going to call Maybe. someone up and you're going to take him away from Rockford – you definitely want to play him here. Yeah, you don't want to take up a guy and just have him be the thirteenth forward, right? Like it does. So we'll see waste, what but. happens. You know, if if you know Reese Johnson and, and Colin Blackwell, neither neither of them uh, skated today, so I don't think they're going to be available. Well, Reese Johnson was on the ice before right. practice, as was that Connor was Murphy. Connor Murphy. I had some people asking about Connor Murphy. He skated on his own, which still, still alive is so. is a good sign. I mean, we're really cutting it close. I'd be shocked if, if he played again this year, but he's trying to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, in typical yeah, he's gonna try hockey to. player fashion. Yeah, yeah. I don't know when to give, it, give up the ghost, but maybe we'll see Murphy back for the last handful of games. Um, Vince is asking when's Nazar coming to the big club, when Michigan stops playing hockey. Um, and they, d- they're in the that. NCAA tournament, and it, it just it's probably not happening this year at this point. The timing isn't going to line up. Probably, oh, no. especially if Michigan wins a little bit here early in the tournament, uh, just not. If going they to if it. they win their uh, first two games, then the that will get them to the Frozen Four. That is Frozen Four is the April eleventh, yeah. I think. Is right as the season yeah. is ending. So yeah. So that's that would that would completely take him off. Yeah. The board. So I don't don't expect to see him. Uh, this they, have year. Tough, they have a tough first game though. They play uh, North Dakota, so maybe it might be over this weekend. Is it Michigan or Michigan State playing North Dakota? Michigan. Michigan. I read mm-hmm. that wrong earlier. Yeah, I mean. I know people were bitching that they, they're they playing in such a small rink in Missouri. Yeah. Uh, North Dakota gets like over 12,000 fans a game. Michigan gets almost 7,000 fans a game, and they're playing Man. in a 2,000-seat arena in middle of nowhere, Missouri. That doesn't is make a whole the, lot of sense. Is it the arena that the Blackhawks played that uh, preseason Blues, game that was like no, untelevised? Because they had no electricity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only so many hamster wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But yeah, even, even let's say, even if Nazar's season ends uh, this weekend to it, it's, it's still up to him. If he, what he wants to do. Um, I, I I mean, I think it'd be fun if he were to, I'm all for it. You do burn a year for only a handful of games. Yeah. So I don't know. And then, I mean, like it's, it's a long season for him. I don't, I don't know how much there is for him to uh, jump in and, and, and do, but if the organization's all for it and he wants to do it, then fine, I'm, I'm on board. Sure. Yeah. Well, one young player who has been uh, improved since his call-up has been Lucas Reichel. Uh, before we wrap up, he met the media today, and I think uh, you like to hear what he has to say. It seems a little bit, uh, I don't know, in a better bit of a mood than the last few times we've spoken to him. He's been playing well. Yeah. It seemed like you were making some really good plays and skating well and everything. It just hasn't really translated to points yet. And I guess it, is that something you're trying to just take that final step with? Uh, yeah, I hope so. I mean, 
Yeah, I felt good, but just like, you know, to have that killer instinct to put it in the ad or, um, you know, make the last pass that um, creates your shot or to a goal. So uh, just, you know, try to keep working on that and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I could produce some, uh, you know, chances and everything. There was that play where you kind of back checked and stole it in the neutral zone and then circled all the way around the offensive zone. Is, is that kind of what you're hoping to do, just to be able to use your speed like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, everyone wants a puck, so um, just try to, you know, make a play and uh, um, be, be good when I don't have the puck. And I've been working with that for. Since I got here, since two two years in Rockford, and uh, um, it's getting better and better. It's, but uh, I mean, still young, so I got so much to uh, work on and improve on. Did you feel more confident than last year? Uh, yeah, I feel like the whole trip. Uh, um, I think since I uh, since I'm back, I feel more comfortable. Um, but like I said, just like have that killer instinct and then uh, yeah, put it in that. Have the coaches talked to you about any way to kind of get more into the inside of the zone, be a little bit less in the perimeter, and so I guess some kind of tactic to, to get in there? Uh, not really tactic, but just having in your mind, like, I want to attack the net. And, uh, you know, just you can practice that. Like, today we had, like, a two-and-two, two and I just try to, you know, attack the net. And um, there, you know, around the net, you score your... You scored a goal, so uh, if you attack and attack something, it's going to bounce in, I feel like. Have you noticed a difference in how Luke Richardson is coached, uh, just in general, not specifically with you, but overall versus last year versus this year? Um, I mean, we're in a you know, tough spot. It's been a tough year, but um, we got to, you know, like, like today, like we skate a lot and have like a harder practice. And then uh, tomorrow, I think, I'm not sure, but tomorrow in the morning, it's like no skate. So um, it's good like to, you know, to go on the ice, practice hard, and then uh, next day you can, you can rest. And I feel like that, that's what, we, what he's been doing this season. And uh, I think so far we like it too. Uh, yeah, just attack the net and have that killer instinct and uh, yeah, just play the same way without the puck, just uh, create more chances. Is there weight on your mind at all? Um, yeah, I mean a little bit, but uh, you just try to, you know, don't think about it. But uh, you know, I love it here and I love the boys, I love the city, so. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you don't. You just try to don't think about it, and all I can do now it's like playing my best game and uh, show these, show everyone that I, you know, can play in this league. So, overall, are you happy with the way your game has grown since coming back from running? Yeah, yeah, I feel like uh, gave me, you know, confidence is such a big thing, but just like you know, uh, without the puck, like having. You know, uh, getting puck backs and uh, competing and doing that like every single day, it's like a big thing and uh, I needed to work on and I feel like uh, I made a big step. It seems like you've always played well against Calgary, so something about them that Yeah, me, me and Dubs were talking about it. We had a, we had a um, good game last year when we played with Taser and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I think uh, it's always nice to play uh, Calgary, so... Uh, um, definitely, we have, we need like a be better start than the last two, three now two games. I think uh, I was pretty good, so uh, um, it's about the start, first period, and then uh, I think in the second, third, we always like good, but first twenty, we gotta be better. No, your first goal was against Calgary, right? Yeah, yeah. So maybe tomorrow is the day. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks. There he was. Lucas Reichel and friends. <laughs> Lucas and friends. Yeah. And Kenzie and Whistle taking off his pants in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Please said the law. He should have blurted out just to confuse people. The unnecessary. <laughs> that would have been great. I was keeping an eye on that as I was filming Lucas like, all right, uh, so far this is still usable. Let's see how far uh, Mackenzie gets here. And it's like, okay, we're good. We're still in the compression gear. Yeah. We're so fine. Uh, good stuff. Yeah. Good to, good to hear from... Uh, uh, from Reichel, um, you know, 
the last couple of games that he's played since since coming back up been noticeably different, noticeably more uh, assertive. Um, just continue that. Continue doing that the rest of this season. Um, hopefully, you know, he can maybe get a couple of, uh, of points, maybe a goal or two here down the, down the last couple of stretch to continue to build off of that, give him some more confidence to, to end the season. Um, you know, finish, finishing a, a year that like, like this that has been frustrating for him, um, finishing a year strong like that can do, can do wonders. He's going to come back next year uh, and, and ha- again, have another opportunity to, you know, really – take hold of, you know, being part of the future, being, being someone that the team is going to uh, invest in and, you know, be looked at as like, Hey, like, you know, Bedard and, and Korchinski and Vlasic and all these rookies and prospects, you, st- we want you to be a part of it too. Like go out and, 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 and play that way. Um, so finishing this year strong, having more uh, performances like he has the last few games, like, that's that's the best thing for him. And he was on uh, power play unit two today with FNCU yeah. and Taylor Radish, yeah. so he'll start getting some power play time here, which is a nice nod from the coaching staff to say, okay, mm-hmm. you've received the message, you're doing the things we're asking you. Here's your reward. And quite frankly, he's one of the top six forwards on his team, so he should be probably getting some power yeah. play time. Um, so yeah, that's uh, we'll look for that tomorrow. By the way, tomorrow is our takeover. Mm-hmm. If you're coming with us, you should have received your tickets today. Yep, They were sent to you today, so make sure you grab those. We're doing a pregame meetup, 530 at Crossroads, right there on Madison and May. May. Thank Madison you. You said that last May. game, and I forgot. Madison and May at Crossroads at 530. Madison May. Sounds like a country singer playing Windy City Smokeout this year. Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. Um, so if you're coming, we can't wait to see you. If did you're not. Pro- we did promote that uh, we had two tickets left. They have been sold. Those are gone. Oh, yes. It is, are again, gone. sold out. Once again, sold out. Sold out. Sold out. <laughs> yep. So we'll see everybody there tomorrow, and we'll be here post game. Uh, tomorrow's post game will probably be a little bit delayed yeah. since we're all staying till the end of the game. So we'll be maybe 15, 20 minutes after the uh, final horn sounds. We'll be getting ready to come on. So mm-hmm. have a little patience, but we'll be here. We'll have a wrap up of the game and and uh, festivities to discuss. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of fun. So we're looking forward to it. Thanks to everybody who's coming, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow on the CHGO Blackhawks post game show. We're all silly like the mayor.